Man, what's going on? What's going on? We are back. We are back. We are back. My saying that I always say, you know what I mean? Bob Arum has a saying, and that is, fans are like dumb rocks that you can throw in any direction. And now what I always say is, don't be that dumb rock that gets thrown in any direction. And one of the major things that I always like to say is, you know, don't let the love of boxing blind you to the realities of what's going on. Now, we have Gary Russell. We have Devin Haney. Um, I put my feelings out about the fight previously. Um, I didn't see the fight was happening just due to the fact that, you know, when someone signs with somebody, you're clearly signing with them because you like the way that they move. You like the things that they do. And what their, what their plans are and how they move is what they're going to present towards you. So when it comes to Michael Terrence Crawford, and is he going to fight this person? He's going to fight him. Like, no, he's not. Due to the way that the people that he signed to move, the way that top rank moves. And I'm not saying, I never actually say the guys are scared. I'm just saying this is the reality of what it is when you're signed to that particular promoter. When you're signed to someone like Eddie Hearn, which Devin Haney is. People, he likes to say that, oh... I'm my own boss, this and that. But at the end of the day, whenever you hear his father speak, well, when we went back to Eddie and he called them, it's always Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. So you're answering to somebody. It's never, oh, when I when I contacted the zone, when I contacted whoever the head is. When you hear a lot of these fighters speak, let's say on PBC, what they always say is, when I contacted Al Heyman, the only person naming the pro another promoter is... Javante Tank Davis, obviously, because he signed to Mayweather promotion. But even he also speaks directly with Al Heyman. But, you know, with Devin Haney, it's always when I speak to, you know, and Bill's always when I speak to Eddie. Right now, a contract was sent out, you know, for, I guess, Devin, uh, a term sheet. Not necessarily a contract yet. They're on that term sheet phase. And on the term sheet, there were certain things that were already sketchy on the term sheet. You know, and I said before, one of the things I said before was, you could say, hey, you know, you can agree to certain things, but when you get the contract or the term sheets, it could be something completely different or not exactly what you thought, especially when it gets to intricate details. Dante Wilder thought that, you know, he had agreed to all the terms with Anthony Joshua, where he was taking a flat fee, $12 million, and he was fighting Anthony Joshua, probably one of the biggest fights in the history of boxing, and he was going to take a $12 million flat fee, agreed to all the terms. On or even the term sheet, he gets a contract to sign. There's no date. There's no venue. Where he signs that contract, he's now bound to them. He's bound to them. You know, so. And then, you know, so it wasn't what they said it was going to be. This particular contract comes in, you know, to Devin, uh, to, to, to Gary Russell Jr. And there's no, the promo, there's no promoter or network on that contract you know it's just something from you know from bill haney saying hey you know yeah this fight goes forward if the zone and if eddie you know match room agree to it so the network's not even on board with it okay the network's not on board um eddie hurts not on board right now okay which then becomes a major issue because then it's hold on we agreed to, you know, to the 1.5 million. So where's this 1.5 million coming from exactly? Where's this 1.5 million? Because the zone didn't give it to you. The zone never agreed to it. So they haven't even said okay to the fight yet. So where's the 1.5 that you that you said okay to? Where's that money at? And it turns out what Bill and them are trying to do. Is the money for November 7th, the date that Devin Hayden is supposed to fight and the purse that he's supposed to get on that particular date. They're trying to basically give that money to Gary Russell somehow. They haven't even received it from the zone yet, but somehow they're going to try to take that money and give it to Gary, um, to, to uh, Gary Russell. And then I guess they're going to try to get their fund, their other funds off that back end, like how the PBC fighters all continuously get that back end, which I don't understand how they're trying to get it from the back end because Gary Russell and them are still going to want to get back in as well. Those those intricate parts of it, they're going to want certain pieces as well, and they're going to want all that stuff brought out. You're not going to be able to hide anything. 
basically almost trying to treat them like this is a rookie. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody like this is someone that can be played in some way. This man has Al Heyman behind him. One of the most, he's a beast. He smells, he can smell a rat a mile of freaking way. You know, he's known for making sure his fighters don't get caught up in effed up deals. You know, yet he's, now you're bringing this towards him. You have a man that you know is real about his ish. You know a man that you know has a monster behind him. That's protecting him. That's making sure everything's on point as far as the cross is being crossed. And that, you know, the, you know, the eyes, be, you know, the, what's it called? The, you know, the eyes being dotted. And the T's being crossed. You know he has that behind him. And then the biggest thing is that you know this guy has another fight already set up. You know that he can he has another fight, you know, against Fortuna that's on the table where he's gonna make the same almost the same exact amount of money as he's gonna make with you. Except with him, you know, whatever he gets, the 1.2, 1.3 million, he's gonna get television rights. You know, he's gonna get when it comes to uh wherever the sponsors are, he's gonna get portions of the sponsor. Whatever merch, even if they can't have, uh, even if they can't have, um, even if they can't have a gate, and you can still sell the merch online. So anything of that nature that comes in, he's still going to get a piece of all of that. Yet, you know, so he doesn't necessarily need you like that. He's just trying to prove a point by fighting your son. So you know, in order to break him off from that situation, you got to come correct. Everything has to be on point. Yet everything's being half-assed. You're doing things in a half-assed way as if you're messing with some kind of rookie. Some little kid that just has a couple of fights in or something of that nature. Who's not really used to dealing with that level, you know, that level of things. You know, something that's above his head. Which is crazy not to end. And you're with somebody like an Eddie Hearn who knows how these people are. They, they have tried to come around with BS before and saw that it doesn't work. They've tried to, you know, take fighters away from these men before by giving them BS contracts and just thinking because this amount, this thing says 30 million or 40 million or 50 million, they're going to take it just because it says a lot of money. And we're seeing right now why they didn't take that with Canelo having a lawsuit because these people are trying to only pay him half. Turns out everybody else is trying to do pay cuts with them. When it comes to Gennady, Golovkin might be filing a lawsuit soon because they want to cut his pay in half as well. So now he, you know, so he's trying to get out of that contract as well now. You got a beast that can see anything coming a mile away. Can see things coming a year, two years down the line. He's five, six steps ahead of you. He's a master at chess. It's checkmate, 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 checkmate every single time. And you're coming at him with chess moves. You're playing connect four with him. This man's playing chess. You're literally playing connect four. Where you know everything needs to be completely on point before you come at this man. He already has a plan to get to Devin. You know? That's what Gary Russell wants? Cool. We get you about 1.2, 1.3 million. You fight, high, you know, Fortuna. You beat Fortuna. You become the mandatory. We'll just automatically schedule this thing for purse bid. We'll win the purse bid. We'll have 100% full control of this fight against Devin Haney. They already have something in the pocket. Bullets in the hole. Guns cocked, ready to blow. They're just off the strength of him being a real man and him having a certain level of respect for you as well. You know? And him not liking the things that have been said about him and the way people are talking about him. And him just strictly having something to prove is like, now nah, I'll work with you and I'll come. I'll do things on your terms so we can handle this now. But then you're coming to him sideways. So like I said before as well, I hope I'm wrong. You know, it's always a great day when you're wrong about something and something good comes out of it. And if these two were to fight, I don't care where they fight, whether it be on Showtime Fox, if they were to fight in the zone, it'd be awesome. So I'd be happy to be wrong. I'd be 100% happy to be wrong. And some people are talking about, oh, well, Devin, you know, maybe now Al Heyman can put up the money and, and, and Devin can go fight on Fox. And people. Matchroom, the zone, 
have a lot invested in this kid. They don't, they don't want him to even fight Gary Russell. They don't want him to fight any live body anytime soon. That's number one. Number two, they are not letting him fight on another network. They're going to say, hey, we have your 1.5 that you're supposed to be getting paid. And we have you, Gary Russell, and we have you, um, Gamboa, or whatever other stiff they have for him available right here. And, we, and we're going to fight on this date on November 7th. So if you want something else, we can maybe set up something else. Because I guess that's the date that they have is November 7th. And Gary Russell's like, yeah, we're not going to fight no, no freaking November 7th. I need a full camp. I need a full eight-week camp. You know? Where you can get sparring partners. You know, get everything specific to that particular guy. All that stuff. I need all that. And now they want to have him sign some deal and fight him within six weeks notice. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong, you know, but right now the way things are going, they're going out about, they're coming at this man in a half-assed way. And that's just not going to get things done, but we'll see. And like I said, I hope I'm wrong when it comes to this, you know, but I'm not letting the love of boxing blind me to the realities of what's going on, you know? When you're lying around with dogs, stray dogs, you're going to get fleas too. And that's what it's looking like right now. But we'll see. Like, subscribe, share. I'm out.